I am going to give you a tutorial on how to use the image plotting for uh, UTEP wells. So we're going to fill in these uh, four, these five tracks with images. And to start off with, we're going to import a sonic waveform. So and then just go to the import logs. I'm going to pick a sonic D-list. Open that. And I'm going to search for uh, waveform three. So the one I want, and so I'm going to select that. And this distance looks OK. So now after importing that, um, we see that we have uh, weight form 3 here, and it shows as an array. Uh, because uh, it is indeed an array with 512 uh, times. And you can see in contrast where the, the depth is just a single, uh, the index log is just a single uh, vector. And so now what we can do is uh, we'll go into the sonic waveform here and we will select images. And we have three, it's already there. And um, just need to change our view to cover the region that we have that. So let's zoom in on that. Okay, and then you can edit it to look more like what you used to. So usually these will be gray. Um, and uh, if you want, you can play with the, the ranges to make it look, uh, add a little bit more contrast. If you want really a lot of contrast, you can hit the equalization. Um, and uh, so now we'll go on and see how you could import a borehole image. Um, so switch files here. And this time we'll go to the borehole image dlist. And this one doesn't have as many uh, channels, so we don't have to actually search for it. I'll just wait for it to load. table. And this time we'll just go down here and we'll pick this uh, geodynamic with 320 elements. It's around the same depth. Um, so we'll import that. Although it's got 38,000 elements in that. So this is a very high resolution uh, image or array. And now if we look here, we can see again, we have uh, an array here. And if we want to put uh, an image, you know that it was about the same region, but now we have two choices. Uh, we have a second log set here. So if we go to that one, it'll automatically find the array. Um, and then uh, we can change this to more common settings and then improve the resolution. And so now you can see what you used to. And, um, and also, if you zoom in on this, you can see that it, it shows you the uh, borehole image there. OK. Now, uh, the next one, we're going to show that uh, you can also import, if you have uh, 
image files like JPEG or PNG or something like that. Um, so in this case, I'll go to the file menu and there is an option to import image from file. And in this case, it'll look for images. So we found a PNG for this CT scan on this one. Oops, select it. So we'll open that. And now it's going to create a UTEP Wells image object. And so we have to set the, the range for this. So let's say it's uh, 2200 because the image itself doesn't store any ranges. And uh, so now you can see that we have um, an image here, CT scan, and uh, we can plot that also as an image. So now we have the choices where you can have either an image file or alas, so in this case, it's the image file. They only have one choice and uh, that's that. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is uh, NMR. We're going to do some little bit of manipulation on this one. Um, so first we'll import some NMR data. Oops, I need to do that. Um, we'll go here because we're going to use a DLIS. So here's this NMR DLIS. that uh, or have a look at it. Okay, and this one I want to search for a uh, T2 distribution. And of course, you can see up here all of the different channels that are in there. So we can see that there's a T2 distribution down here. Um, so as it loads the table, then we can search the distribution. And there's the one that we want, T2 distribution. Okay, so we'll select that. Um, I'm going to limit this one from 7700 to Just to get some round numbers. Now we'll import that. Okay, so now you can see that we have um, this T2 distribution array here. Uh, you can look at that number of ways, but the first thing we can do is we'll just plot it directly as an image. Again, we have to, so last, we have to go to this array. So you see the T2 distribution and wonder where it is. Well, that happened, if you recall, it was up at 7,700. So, um, if we look down here, see that it's way down here at 7,700. And uh, so one thing that you can do, and, and wouldn't necessarily want to make a lot of sense, but just to show you some of the editing capabilities here, um, you can take this and you can say, because it's an array, you can say make an image. And so make an image. And now in, in images, we have this T2 distribution. And if you click on this, you can edit it. And you see, you can set the horizontal ranges and stuff. But uh, one thing you can do here is you can change, you can basically make the uh, depth to be whatever you want. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to I'm just going to move it down uh, a ways and leave the same uh, overall uh, depth range. Okay, so now if we go back to what we had here, we can add another image. 
And this time we'll plot images. And now you'll see that you have two possibilities here. And the second one is T2 distribution. And so now, look at that. range here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now the last thing uh, that I want to show go out a bit on this. Okay, so the last thing I want to show is uh, that if you have, in, in some cases, you'll see that uh, even in a D list, the uh, arrays will be separated into different channels, or in a last, it might be uh, different logs. Uh, and so we made a capability here where you can merge these together. So I'm going to do this for, um, in this case, I'm, I'm going to merge a bunch of uh, uh, resistivity logs together. So here we have, uh, you just go on the log set and you can say merge select logs and it's going to open a window for you where you can select the different logs that you want to combine. So in this case, I'm going to select all of the AT resistivities, put them over here. And, uh, and you can also add uh, spaces between because uh, for cases like this uh, borehole image, if that's what you have, and you may want, you may know that uh, these have some separation between them. So you can add a space and you can move things up and down in here. So if you want, um, you can add a, I can move the space up to there. And add another space. If you want, you can make these spaces bigger. Um, and so uh, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to leave the last two together just to show that. And we'll create that log. And so now if we look in that, it puts it in the same log set. Uh, but now we have uh, an array log. Now you can see the difference between the ones that are uh, single logs, single vector logs, and then this one, which is an array log. Um, and then over here, we can plot that. And you can see now, uh, actually, if you just to like, So you can make change the play with the, the uh, color limits to get this to be more or less visible. But you can see the um, differences here. And you can also try a different uh, colors if you want. And uh, let's make this even. No okay, so here that way you can see that yeah, that we actually had this striping in here similar to what we had over here. Um, and uh, so that's what we have. And also you can plot, uh, if you wanted to, you could plot other logs now on top of this. So that you can plot, for instance, uh, one of the resistivity logs on top of this. So let's put the Eighteen ninety, and uh, you can see here that uh, where the where the peaks actually match the the high points in this in the in these logs. All right, that's it.
Thanks.